If you are the first user of your organization, it's important to understand the difference between an individual vault and an organizational vault. An individual vault represented by my vault is the vault that is specific to the individual email that the user has been signed up with. Anything contained within my vault is not able to be managed by the organization. So it's an important distinction. On the other side, we have our organizational vault. This is how your users will be able to share items with other users within the same organization through the use of collections. Collections, which typically represent either departments or areas of responsibility, can have their permissions managed independently and can consist of any of the different item types. In order to create a new organization, all I have to do is come up here and click on New Organization. Here is where I'll enter the name of my organization, a billing email address, and choose my plan. We offer a free plan, which is available to all users. It's limited to two users total, so you and one other user, and it's limited to two collections. Families for personal use, which can have up to six total users, so you and up to five additional family members. And this offers all the additional benefits of a premium account. And then for businesses and other organizations, we offer Teams and Enterprise. Teams is typically going to be used for a smaller group that does not prioritize SKIM or enterprise policies. So if you are interested in implementing policies at a large scale, enterprise would be the right choice. Collections allow items to be grouped together, both for organizational purposes as well as to allow them to be managed at scale. Each of these collections can have different permissions assigned to them based on the setup of your organization. Collections are typically named based on either departments or areas of responsibility. You can also nest collections, as you can see here with collaboration and comms. Right now, this is primarily a UI feature to make it easier for you and your users to understand which collections are used by which users. If you want to look at what is within a particular collection, you can either navigate to collections, which will give you a folder-like experience. So in this case, I will click into collaboration comms. And I have this navigation to go back to here at the top. In order to manage our collections, we can go up to our organizations tab and that will allow us to either create a new collection or create a new item within a collection. If I select collection, from this dialog, I can give it a name, assign it an external ID if I'm using a third party IDP that would manage this collection, and I can choose to nest the collection under an already existing collection. I can also define access. From here, I can define which groups and members will be able to do certain actions within that collection. If you are part of an enterprise organization, this would be when we would recommend setting up your organizational policies. These will be within your settings and policies. We'll talk through the most common ones here. The first is master password reset. Master password reset allows administrators and owners to reset the master password for their members. The first checkbox allows users to be able to opt in 
where the second checkbox will require all new members to be enrolled automatically. This is not retroactive, so if you intend to enroll new members automatically, we recommend that you turn this on at the start of your organization. The next two are master password requirements. This will set a minimum master password strength, so complexity or length here, as well as characters that have to be present in a user's master password. The next is the password generator. So while the previous policy set minimums for the master password, this policy enforces minimums for the Bitwarden password generator. This can set different minimums for both passwords and passphrases, and that will come up when the user goes to create a new login. So if I navigate to my create new item dialog and go to create a password, you can see that certain options are grayed out as well as set based on my organization's policies. Lastly is single organization. The single organization policy is typically enabled when you want to enable single sign-on or skim provisioning. In order to enable these features, users cannot belong to multiple organizations. Now, let's take a look at importing data. When you first start with Bitwarden, you may be transitioning from an existing password manager or from another solution. In which case, you will have items, typically logins, that you will want to import into Bitwarden. You can do that from the organization's page settings, and import data. From this page, we allow a wide variety of different import formats, and we also have guides associated with these in our Help Center. In this case, I'm going to select Bitwarden, select my previously downloaded file, and click Import Data. As an administrator, I may also be tasked with creating backups of my organizational vault. To do this in the UI, I navigate to Settings and Export Vault. From here, I have three different options for export. I can choose to export in plain text for a JSON or a CSV file, or I can choose to export an encrypted JSON. If you do choose to download an unencrypted version, please be sure to secure that file through other methods. This is not a file that you want sitting on a desktop. You'll want to ensure that it is either put in another vault, encrypted using some other method, or stored offline. If you choose to download an encrypted JSON, you'll have the option to export as account restricted, which means this particular account with its username and master password must be used to re-upload it or password protected so that any other user, as long as they have the password, can re-upload this JSON file. 